It's so amazing to see a manuscript and a Word document become a cover and then to see the author crying and just so excited that she did all this and that she has a conference of 100 people waiting to hear what she has to say about her book and about her message. And it's like I'm sitting in this chair as a proud mom and to witness those beautiful things transpire from a simple, which I don't find simple, conversation of trying to put it all together and make it work, you know? Welcome to the award-winning author show. I'm your host, Lise Yumina, CEO of Halo Publishing International. If you're ready to build your legacy by self-publishing your next book, then let's get started. Who is the woman behind Halo Publishing International? Today, we're learning about Lisa Michelle Yumina's journey from corporate America to international award-winning author, publisher, and CEO. I'm Alina Bond, producer of the award-winning authors show. Lisa, thank you so much for joining me today. It is my pleasure. I was looking forward to this interview all week. So the tables are turned a bit and we decided it would be a wonderful idea to have Lisa on and have me interview her so we can all get to know more about who Lisa is, her life story. It's so interesting. She's built such a wonderful company and we just wanted a way for people to get to know the real Lisa. So that being said, Lisa, let's dive right in so we can get to know how you got to where you are today. So, first of all, Lisa, tell us about your upbringing and how you became an author. Well, that's a a beautiful segue into something that means so much to me. My my dad and my mom, they worked really hard. My dad was a car salesman and he played the accordion. And then my mom worked in the church as a sacristan. And she always was coming up with creative ways to to make money. Part of that was showing us if we wanted something that we had to work hard for it. So when I look back, I think it was around 10 years old when I started thinking, well, how can I make money? I went door to door selling magazine subscriptions to having paper routes, to shoveling snow in the winter with my brother. And when I look back at that, you know, I have to laugh because Dave and I had the most crazy imagination. I laughed too because when I say this out loud, and I said it in my school visits, that I went around the neighborhood and garbage picked. <laughs> they did, people just looked at me like, what? But we did. We garbage picked things, and we we then had a garage sale, and then we sold it, or we built forts with materials that we found. Later, to know that that would have been the biggest segue into the third book that I wrote, Milo and the Green Wagon, and that won an award nationally. So just showing how we went around and garbage picked. We did find a wagon and we went and collect food for people in need. And it just, I look back at that and I think, wow, what a beautiful way to doing all those creative ways to making money. And the bigger part of it was making a difference. When I look back at that, it was very instrumental to who I am today. Wow. So you, you were an entrepreneur from a young age. You had a lot of odd jobs, but look at everything just stacks together and just builds your lifelong experience. I know that Halo is coming up on its 20th anniversary. Congratulations. What led you to opening an international publishing company? I was at a book conference in Los Angeles when I was asked to translate my first book, Milo, with a Halo into Spanish. And here on Books in Chicago invited me to a tour throughout the United States that led me to Mexico. I came to Mexico for both love and the next chapter in my life, no pun intended. <laughs> and I opened up the international doors and I felt that if I can make it international, then I have this incredible gift and talent to help other authors, writers all over the world to become authors internationally. Wow, that's amazing. So you did it for yourself. You wrote your book, you went on tour, and then you decided you wanted to help other people do the same. So what do you enjoy most about your career? Oh, every day I start my day meditating, an eternal, all the things I'm grateful for. I don't feel that I, I have a job. I feel I have an incredible responsibility to find the next author, coach the next author, 
and it helped them through making an important decision in our life to publish their voice, to create a legacy with them. And, and by doing that, I feel very rewarded because I know it might seem that it comes natural, but I really enjoy the opportunity because every phone call is a different story. One could be that they survived cancer, to writing a children's book, teaching children how to respect and love themselves. So it's exciting every single day that I come into that front door. Oh my gosh. I bet you hear a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> so how did writing a book help your career and your business? Well, not many people know this. And I really had no idea I was going to write a book. It was until something tragic happened to me. I was in sales at the Wall Street Journal. I was at Hilarity's Comedy Club doing stand-up comedy. And I was singing at the Cleveland Cabaret. All of a sudden, I noticed that my vocal cords weren't uh, working the way I wanted them to. And I went to the Cleveland Clinic. The doctors diagnosed that I had cysts in my vocal cords. So one of the shocking things from that was that the doctor said, we don't know what type of voice you're going to have or you're going to even have a voice after we remove the tumors or the cysts. And it just shut my whole world down because here I am and the biggest thing I have and the gift that I think I have is to communicate with people through singing or through my humor or through business. And that all shut down and through recovery, I obviously have a voice and I can still sing, but it's a different octave, but I, I, I can work with it. But I wrote the first story, Milo, with a halo. And again, not knowing where that was going to take me, I just looked at, okay, here's this opportunity to, to do something with this. I created the Milo and Lisa show. We went on to schools locally in Cleveland, Ohio, and then it went national, then it went international. I was on TV, radio, in front of students and gymnasiums of 700 to 1,000 people. And I was doing exactly what I think I was called to do. I think everything you do in life prepares you for that next moment. And there I was in front of an audience that I loved. And I was reading my stories, teaching children to talk to God anytime, anywhere about anything. So everything just kind of led up into that moment. But Truthfully, I had no idea that writing that book had opened up so many opportunities for me. Wow. Going off script a little, but that just made me think about something. The stories that authors choose to write their book about, obviously, is the launch pad, whether they're going to do well or not, right? So yeah. hearing from your experience, it just sounds like your story and your book was so genuine and it was something that really helped you. So knowing that, what kind of advice do you have for authors as they pick the story that they want to write their book about? I'm going to give them the same advice I gave myself. You have to write what you know. Write what makes your soul on fire. And once you have your book, to put everything you have to promoting it. I mean, you have to campaign for you in your book, whether it's setting up social platforms, hosting a book release party. I think one of the biggest things is people like, oh, I just have it in my hands. It, it's a big thing. It's a big deal to share. Part of what I enjoy is that I get that opportunity and share that opportunity with our authors to release their voice internationally. And when they understand what that responsibility is, it's like taking care of your child. You can't take care of your child once a month. You have to baby this, no pun intended, every single day and show up not only for your book, but for life for you. And I find that I was successful and I am successful because I work at that every single day. I'm always self-educating. I'm always self-promoting. I'm always taking risks. You know, I think the biggest thing I feel our clients that when I talk to them as writers is they, they're fearful. Why not be? I mean, I've, I was afraid too, but I would never allow my fear to stop me from doing something that was bigger than me. And you can clearly see that this path was paved out way before I even knew it. And it was because I took the risks, took the chances, showed up, went to LA, went to the book tours, that every single thing that I did led me to the next moment. And that's why I'm here sitting in this chair as an international publisher an award-winning author. Wow, that's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about 
when you were getting your first round of clients and your first round of books to publish, what kind of books were you publishing? I mean, at that time, I was still learning what I can do for an author. And I flew to China. I learned about printing and I worked with Ingram Distribution and went to Tennessee to learn that. So I wanted to learn all the aspects so that I really can be a professional. But what I find is just coaching them through the, the whole process and understanding it firsthand because I am an author, so I know what it takes to become a successful award-winning author. So I want those same goals for them. I mean, and I, again, I pay attention to what they need and what they want, but the stories were, I mean, I had a, a mom who wrote about her daughter who was autistic and she went on to win a national award, went on to write for the autism magazine. Her daughter was on the cover in the centerfold and today, Lori Demonia's book, Leah's Voice, is one of the best-selling autism books in the world. And again, talk about opportunities. I don't believe in coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. She wanted to write a book about bullying, and, and, great, and, and it was a great book. Our committee accepted that. But just those moments, those big moments that seemed like they were just the smallest moment in my career was ended up being one of the biggest. So 20 years later, what kind of books is Halo publishing mostly? Self-help. We work with a lot of business professionals, news anchors. Again, writing children's books is really big. We're known all over the world for that. But again, we don't print everything. We don't publish everything. There's a, there's a good fit for both the client and for Halo. So it's an interview twofold. I mean, we want a client that's eager to do everything it, that the job requires and I also want a really good story to back it up. Sometimes I have a great client, but the story needs work. But again, we still work together to make it work, to make it to go to the level it needs to be to publish that story. Wow. And I will have to say that I have heard Lisa in her consultations when someone's interested in writing their first book. And I, I heard the consultations, they'll come to you with one idea, but you just listening to them, you realize, no. This is bigger than that. Or no, you're focusing on the wrong thing. There's a way bigger picture. And then it was very cool to see that come full circle on the next consultation call. And the author says, you know what? You're right. This is bigger. It's really probably more of a three book series. And actually, you're right. I do want to build this speaking platform. I do want to build my business around this central point. And I just couldn't believe how quickly you could identify that and then how quickly you and the author and your team can make it come alive. That was very impressive. Yeah, I enjoyed you being here. <laughs> I say that I'm passionate about meeting our clients, but the, the big word is it's the team. It's the team that I have that can take the vision that I have and the author's vision, blend that together and make this magical process because it is magical. It's so amazing to see a manuscript and a Word document become a bookshelf bookstore in the cover and, and then to to go we went to the Guadalajara book fair here in Mexico and to see the author crying and just so excited that she did all this and that she has a conference of 100 people waiting to hear what she has to say about her book and about her message and it's like I'm sitting in this chair as a proud mom and to witness those beautiful things transpire from a simple, which I don't find simple, conversation of trying to put it all together and make it work, you know? Exactly. So so that being said, what are you most proud of in your work with Halo? So during this pandemic that we all thought was going to only last a couple of weeks, we were we were challenged. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that we weren't, but in a time where a lot of businesses suffered, we went the whole other way. And a lot of people paid attention to the pause that we're giving in this pandemic. And the pause said, pay attention to what's important to you. They focused on a message that they kept putting on the back burner and brought it to me. And we did it. We went from three people on that team to seven. We're in a new office and we expanded. And I think all of those things could sound like a challenge, but again, it was just a need that we had to fulfill and we had to grow to do it. And so I have this incredible team from a chief editor now to a full consulting team to help other authors, not only at Halo, but with Ola Publishing International. And being the person from Cleveland, Ohio, to have to learn a language, second language at 30, 
to come to Mexico to open up another company, Ola Publishing International, I feel is incredible that I can give the Latinos a beautiful set way, a beautiful platform so that they can be heard. And again, still working on the Spanish part, but I have a beautiful team that can connect with them to help them to do the same thing that I do here in Halo Publishing as well. Yes, I'll have to say that when I came down to visit Lisa in Mexico and I met her whole team, I was so impressed with the operations. Everyone is just on top of their game. And Lisa, I don't know how you keep track of everything. You guys have so much activity. It's just the energy there is very contagious and it's very rewarding to see that all of that activity results in beautiful products telling people's life stories and the experiences that they've learned. I just, I love your business so much. So Lisa, I'm wondering, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered by how many lives I've touched, inspired. I feel my purpose here on earth is to help people find their purpose. Part of what I also want to be remembered is for is my kindness and how I made people feel in my presence. In my generosity, I feel that as a business owner or as a, as a person, that we have this incredible responsibility to give back. And I know that through everything that what's given to me, through the talents and the time, the dedication I give, that I'm rewarded with so many things that I feel that the big circle in life is to keep that energy going and giving it to someone else. Mm -hmm. I love that. And as um, your producer and a friend, I would say that definitely is how you make people feel and we can definitely see it. And I think it's very evident in even your clientele and all the books that you've produced. It's already happening. So Lisa, thank you so much for this interview today. I just am so happy that I could be here with you to have this discussion because I know how wonderful you are, how genuine and kind and exciting and helpful you are. So this is just a great asset that I hope that a lot of people can listen to and get to know you. And Lisa, if someone is interested in publishing their book with Halo, can you give them a little bit more direction as to what they can do to get in contact with you? Sure. I want to first thank you. I think today's interview had two, two different meanings for me. One is to obviously share this whole journey that I've had for the last 20 years, but also you, you've come to be a friend of mine and de a dear friend of mine. And I think our humor is one of the most best parts about it. People don't see that as much in this interview. We're trying to keep very professional in this, but I, I love to laugh. And I think it's so important to have friendships that we have faith in God and that we can laugh at ourselves, at each other. I was looking forward to this because I wouldn't have any other one else interview me but you. You prepared me for this moment and I thank you for that. So how to get a hold of us, how to find us, how to know the next step. You can go to our website, halopublishing.com. You'll see that there's beautiful steps wherever you're at in the process, whether you're writing the story or you're finished with the story or you need more information, we have a publishing guide. I personally meet with every single author. I love that interview. I love that moment. You can request a, a personal consultation with me on our website and we'll go from there. All righty. Well, thank you so much again, Lisa. That is a wrap for today's interview. Thank you all for listening and we hope that you'll tune in to the next episode. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you're ready to publish your book, please submit your manuscript on halopublishing.com or you can download our free publishing guide to learn everything you need to know about the entire self-publishing process. Start writing your legacy today.